Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 58. Models Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and warming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. Ow! Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This has been another busy, busy week for EOB. Lots and lots of stuff going on behind the scenes. I worked on another humongous video that you guys are gonna see really, really soon. Some sort of different stuff than we normally do, but I think it turned out really, really neat. Stay tuned. But behind, but in between working on all these videos and stuff, I got to, to listen to an audiobook. And I listened to uh, Cyphus Kane, Caiaphas Kane, Cyphus Kane, for the Emperor, another Warhammer book. It's been a while since I dipped back into the Black Library novels. I really, really like them, but I, I uh, sometimes I'll need podcasts or music. Or I just, I just want to add a little variety to what I'm doing in my free time. But it was really, really good. I did not think I would like it because I've seen the cover and he's kind of got this like kind of grin on his face and he's a commissar and it's the Imperial Guard. And I'm like, eh. My least favorite Warhammer novels are the ones that are kind of like focused on a battle or a war. It's like we have to defeat the bad guys to for the honor of the Imperium and duty and honor and duty. I don't know. Those those don't grip me as much as kind of more character driven books. But I, that, I character driven is completely what I got with For the Emperor. It was really good because I didn't realize this, but the whole point of Caiaphas Cain is he is a coward. He only cares about himself. He's very selfish and he does not consider himself a good leader. And uh, he says that immediately in the book. The book is from the perspective of him recounting his memoirs. And he loves to self aggrandize and he loves to talk about how he's able to kind of schmoots people and kind of get one over on people. And he lucked into this persona as Caiaphas Cain the amazing hero, brave general, always knows what to do. And uh, and he's he's lucked into this persona. And so he uses it to manipulate people. And he always is like, ooh, you know where I need to be? In the back of the in the back of the army, because I don't want to get shot at. I don't want to fight. I don't want to do anything dangerous. I am just looking out for number one myself. And it was a really, really fun book. I would Super suggest it if you're if you if you want to get into the Black Library. Everybody says you gotta do Eisenhorn. You gotta do Eisenhorn. You gotta do Eisenhorn. I don't think Eisenhorn is that good. Eisenhorn is such a sourpuss. His friends are kind of fun, but his friends don't get nearly as much screen time as he does. And I feel like his adventures. I feel like all of his books start out really good because they always kind of start out with smaller scale adventures for Eisenhorn and friends. And then they end with some huge battle that doesn't matter. And I really like the, the Kyphus Kane book because it was kind of just a fun little story. It felt very Star Wars. Just him and a couple of friends, they have to do this, then they have to do that, and then they have to do this. And he's always looking for ways to get out of it or to get one over on people. It was really fun. And the book is kind of written in a really interesting style where uh, it's it's kind of some this this uh, the story of this battle or what happened on this planet is being prepared to be presented to someone else, and so they're using Cyphus Kane's memoirs, and then they're all there's also notes from other people, and the notes from other people are sometimes really really funny because Kane will say something and then it'll be like author's note Kane is incorrect here. What really was going on was this. And sometimes those happen in a really fun way, either to contradict Kane and prove kind of what a narcissist he is, or sometimes the uh, these little author interjections will kind of prove how the Empire sees itself, but Kane actually sees it for what it really is. Like in one part of the book, he said that uh, that um, Inquisitors are dummies; they don't know anything and they don't know what they're doing. And then the author, author's notes, the Inquisitors are actually the most important thing that has ever happened to the Warhammer world. They keep us safe from all the baddies and they're the greatest thing that's ever happened to humanity. Whereas I kind of believe Cain a little bit more than I believe the author's notes. And then sometimes they always say that Cain is really bad at talking about battles. He tends to just, he tends to just gloss over things like that. So they'll bring in other works of uh, other historical documents for those. And what's really funny is there's kind of a war going on between the two different authors where one will be like, 
this person kind of sucks. I'm sorry to do this to you, but I have to use his information because he was the only one taking notes at the time. And then when it's his turn to offer an interjection, he's like, I, I hate to do this, but you're, you're going to use some of her texts. And, you know, she's a little too flowery. She's a little too verbose. And he kind of got these like dueling authors going on. It's, it was a really, really fun book. It's small in scale. Cyphus Kane is hilarious. And what's great is uh, him being a coward and always kind of looking for the easy solution or the nonviolent solution, the path of least resistance, kind of means he's a really good leader because he doesn't do all of the dumb stuff from 40K. He talks a lot about how he's very, very, he's very reluctant to execute his the soldiers under his command, which is what commissars are famous for, because he's like, as soon as I shoot someone, everybody hates me and wants to kill me. And I don't want people to want to kill me. I want them to want to protect me. And so he just doesn't kill anyone. And it turns out to be great leadership because the soldiers under, under his command love him. And it just kind of worked like that's, that's clearly a better strategy than leading through fear and killing everybody who gets in your way. In fact, I got about a quarter of the way through uh, the book Honorbound, the, the Severina Rain novel, and I didn't like it as much. It's very similar to this book. It's two commissars going on little adventures, but Severina Rain wasn't very likable to me because she's kind of a baddie. She's a good commissar in the world of Warhammer, which means that she kind of leads through fear. She kills people. She's not nice. There was a part in the book where a chaos, like a chaos sorcerer shoots mind magic into the soldiers and one of them runs away because they were like psychically terrified and had no choice but to run away. And so she immediately executes them because that is what her duty is. Her duty is to kill anybody who would ever think of disobeying orders, even though he didn't think of disobeying orders. He was like magically forced to run away. And I'm like, well, Severina, that's not very nice. And she's mean to her psyker. I didn't like her. I really, really like Zyvis Kane. Even though, like, even though he's a bit of a dick, outwardly, he's nice to everyone. And, and he's funny, and he's always looking out for number one. But through looking out for number one, it actually makes him a really, really good guy. <laughs> And he's just a good leader. If 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 every commissar was a Cyphus Kane, well, they would probably all desert immediately. But it, it would be better. It's I love when Warhammer points out that the Warhammer world is bad because there's they don't do this nearly enough, especially with all of these novels about like you know space marines. Oh, we must we're the champions of humanity. It kind of makes it feel like the Warhammer world is a world where doing the nasty evil thing is right because if we didn't everything would fall apart but i really like little moments like this where cyphus kane not doing all of those dumb things proves that that's not true that's just what they think in ten thousand years of humanity going downhill they have it in their heads that they have to be evil and nasty and mean but in reality if they were just a little bit more nice and progressive and honest things would be okay it wouldn't all immediately fall apart. I really, I really got a kick out of this book. It's really, really fun. For the Emperor. The title in itself is a joke from the book because Cyphus Kane doesn't believe in that. <laughs> he does not charge into battle going for the Emperor. He, he leads, he leads a team of commandos from the back into, into battle. Hope, and, he, and he's, and he has hoodwinked all of them into believing that he's a great guy who's looking out for their best interests in the hopes that maybe they'll take a bullet for him and keep him alive just a few extra days. It is a really, really funny book. In, he says, in, in there's one part in the book where he's truly terrified. I mean, in this book, he's fighting demons and cultists and, and uh, not fighting demons, but he's fighting all sorts of, all the baddies in the, in the universe. And there's one moment in the book where he's truly terrified and he says, Emperor's balls. And what truly terrifies him is he thinks somebody has figured out that he's a fraud. That is the most afraid he is in the book. <laughs> and I think that is excellent. For the Emperor, so much fun. I, I think there's more of these books. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going through them. Really, really fun. But in other Warhammer news, Games Workshop is gearing up for Warhammer Fest 2022 online. Even though I think there's an actual event on Saturday, but uh, but I'm not going, so pfft. But 
these these sorts of things, I mean, they're fun. It's fun that they, they do events and things, but it never feels that special to me because they're always coming out with stuff all the time, always. So it doesn't feel that special. I guess they're coming to, gonna come out, you know, in regards to a normal week, they're gonna have like three or four more extra things next week. So that's kind of cool. But they did throw up this, this fun banner to kind of let people look at and speculate about what's gonna come out. And it's, it's clearly a tease. There's no way to actually get any real information out of this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to mine this for a few little nuggets. And obviously there's two heresy. There's the, uh, the Thousand Suns and Imperial Fists. Oh wait, no, that's an eyeball. That's not the Thousand Suns. That is the Horus, Horus's, Horus's goons. I know they're the Lunar Wolves, but I know they're also something else. But uh, obviously what that means is that they're gonna finally put out the, uh, the Star Collecting Box, the big two armies in a battle box. But what I think would be awesome, here's, here's what I want them to unveil. Forge World is over. They're shutting down. No more Forge World. No more ridiculously overpriced, inferior quality resin. They're shutting down. No more looking at that weird blue-gray website. It's, they're going to port some things over to, to, to the Games Workshop web store. Maybe they'll produce a couple of the Forge World kits in Finecast. They'll still sell the Titans because those are the only things that make them any money. But Forge World is finally done. R.I.P. Forge World. It's, it's gotta happen one of these days, right? Because Forge World is not a good service. Games Workshop's prices are already ridiculous, and then Forge World's like, why don't we add like 25, 50% for every kit? It's ridiculous. However they produce resin is not very good, and apparently is so cost ineffective that their prices are astronomical. I've bought so much resin from so many different companies, and everything I've gotten has been better than Forge World. Forge World is poopy. They got a couple of cool kits that could very easily be ported over to Games Workshop. Or you know what? Maybe they just go away because Forge World has sold a lot of cool kits over the years and they've all vanished and we all survived and it was fine. <laughs> so obviously that's that's probably going to be Wednesday. And on a Thursday, we got a little Kill Team Necromunda action. And I think they announced the pre-orders for the Necromunda starter box already. So it's not going to be that, but it's probably going to be some more Ash Wasteland stuff. So they've already shown off some of the models that are in the world. So what I think they're going to show off is the Ash. They're going to they're going to come out with a new basing material that is a Ash pigment powder, and it's going to be called the Ash Wastes. Clearly, that is what I can get from this banner. I'm right. So if you guys want some really, really cool like Ash dust, I think that then uh, Thursday is going to be the day to pick that up. And there's also a Kill Team banner, which is really interesting because I feel like it's too early for them to announce more Kill Team stuff. We just had the, the Corsair versus Chaos Space Marine box, and I feel like it's too early for them to reveal the next box. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe they're going to show it off and then wait months for the actual box to come out, which is not at all impossible from Games Workshop. But. I don't know, maybe they're gonna release something new. They do They do wipe doors, but I feel like Warhammer Fest is too big to just unveil, oh, we wrote some new white dwarf rules for something. So what could they do that is not a full doubles box for kill team, but is also more interesting than a white dwarf? I think what they're gonna do is they're going to bring back kill team 2018. They're going to bring it back for all of the Space Marine players who were very upset that they didn't get everything they could possibly want on launch day. Even though all of the other people, all of the other players, all of the Xenos players, all the Imperial players were like, yay, we still get all of the same options we did before and the game is way better. Space Marine players were like, what? I don't have to buy six different $50 boxes so that I can take one sergeant from each box. They ruined it. There's no flavor. This game is bland now. Uh, unsubscribe, dislike, <laughs> leave the channel. And so I think that they're going to bring back Kill Team 2018, but it's going to be rules for Warhammer, regular Warhammer 40k 9th edition, because Kill Team 2018 was just regular Warhammer 40,000 
but with a couple of different rules. It was exactly the same, the same list building, the same units, the same ridiculous, you can take anything you want from anything, even if they don't sell models for it. And you know, people were buying eight plasma gun arms from Imperial Guard off of eBay for the flavor, not because it was an insta win button. So yeah, clearly that Kill Team logo means that they're bringing back Kill Team 2018 and they're tacking it onto Warhammer 40,000. So now you can play Kill Team, which is its own really fun, unique, good quality skirmish game that's got a lot of depth and is really interesting. And then you're gonna have 9th edition with another thing attached to it. Love it. So that's Thursday. Moving on to Friday, we got some Age of Sigmar stuff. We have, hmm, I think that they're going to announce that they are going to do a second run of Dominion. Because Dominion, the wildly popular board, the wildly popular doubles box, easily surpassing the popularity of Indomitus a few years ago, they're definitely going to be doing another run of Dominion because there's not thousands upon thousands of Dominion boxes sitting out there on shelves uh, unpurchased. They're definitely, there's definitely the demand. They're gonna be doing a new run, maybe even a made to order run of Dominion just so that everybody can get those models. Dominion is a really, really good box. If you can pick up Dominion for like 110, 120 bucks, I think you can, you should totally do it. It's a great box. It comes with the, the full size rule book. It's a really fun game. I've played with Age of Sigmar with that box and it's fun. Uh, the only problem with that box is that they made way too many of them. <laughs> they, pr they probably made exactly as many copies as they made with Indominus, but I think literally Space Marines are more popular than Age of Sigmar. Not even 40K, 40K versus Age of Sigmar. Space Marines are more popular than Age of Sigmar. They probably should have made like a quarter of the number or something. But don't worry if you missed out because on Friday, they're gonna be releasing uh, Dominion again. All right, and is there anything else? Is there anything else on this banner that they're showing off? Is that, what is that skull? Is that Warcry? Um, I think they're gonna be announcing the end of Warcry. That's what I think that that banner symbolizes. Ooh, and I think I see the squats. They've already shown off a few things for the squats. One singular model and some art. And so they'll probably show off some more stuff for the squats. God, the squats are interesting. They, Cause Games Workshop is just pulling a brand new thing out of their butt. We've, Cause we've seen like the Gene Stealer Cult, the Skitari, the um, the Sisters of Battle were all things that already existed and they kind of just brought it back. But with squats, it's kind of a whole new thing. I mean, the, the reason that they stopped doing squats the first time is cause they couldn't think of anything to do with them, but apparently they've thought of something to do with them. And so what are they gonna be releasing for the squats in Warhammer Fest 2022 online? They are going to be releasing an upgrade sprue for the Caradron Overlords to turn them into Warhammer 40k squat models. I think I think they're going to it's going to be exactly like the Chaos Demons. You can use the Caradron Overlords in Warhammer 40,000 and you can use the Caradron Overlords in Age of Sigmar. I think that is the clear best thing that they could possibly do. I think that that is definitely 100% going to happen. Definitely definitely not being facetious. I think uh that that is definitely what's gonna happen. Probably probably what you're gonna get is a whole bunch of like bolters and las guns and plasma guns that you can bolt onto the Caradron Overlord's floaty boat tanks. I think, I think that that'll make them really, really cool. And you know what? I think because the Caradron Overlords are kind of steampunky dwarves and the new squats they're showing off are kind of gonna be steampunky dwarves, I think that it'll work flawlessly. Because really, what can you do with dwarves? <laughs> They're just little guys with hammers. I know they showed off the stat line and the stat line is completely average and who cares? They get to, they move, they move at normal human speed instead of Space Marine or Eldar speed. It's fine. It's all gonna be fine. <laughs> so those are my predictions. Those are my Warhammer Fest predictions. And the one I'm looking forward to the most is probably that little cup of Ash Wasteland. I think that'll be really, really fun. I do think the Ash Wasteland will present hobbyists with a really, really fun opportunity to make like some interesting boards. I know uh, one thing that people used to do back in the day is they would take a big sheet of pink foam and like a hairdryer, and they would use the hairdryer to melt the foam to create an interesting kind of uneven texture. And I think that would lend itself perfectly, perfectly to, to the Ash Wastelands. And then you take some of your Ash Wasteland pigment powder, and you just sprinkle it on top, kind of work it in there with a brush. It'll look great. And I'm super excited for the end of Forge World. <laughs> I got the inside scoop, people. But that is gonna be really, really fun. I cannot wait for Warhammer Fest 2022 online. 
It was a really, really fun week in the Warhammer world, and I can't wait to listen to more Black Library novels. But you know what's even better than the Black Library novels? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have tons of behind the scenes, voting on models to paint live here on YouTube, a weekly live hobby hangout, and tons and tons and tons of terrain STLs. And we even do one extra episode of EOB a week. And if that's not your thing, we also have merch. Link in the description. Good old Warhammer. I wonder what they'll come up with next, and I'm sure whatever it is, it'll be fine. Thanks for watching.